understand that this is not the reality of life. This was just a story. I was in, I watched it, I came out, and I'm not impacted by it. So if we look at it, the story is the same, the theater is the same, the sad happenings were the same, but we didn't react to that the same way. What made that difference was our inner power. Those who had strong inner power, inner strength, are the ones who are able to keep that calmness even after going through that situation. Same way, if we maintain that inner strength, inner power all the times, the sad stories of this world, the painful happenings of this outer world, the challenging situations of this outer world, they will come but they will not be able to impact us. Such a beautiful example that teaches us, yes it's possible. Why am I being sad? If I am sad, let me do something to create that inner power and become the master of my destiny, control my life, increase my joy, increase my bliss. Because the worldly success can come and go. It's never the same, it never stays with us. Because think about it, whatever we had yesterday, we may not have all of it today. And what we have today, we may not have it in future. Because it's always in passing. It's always fluctuating. Sometimes we have it less of the material success and sometimes we have more. But it's never the same. But one thing is for sure. That once we achieve this inner power, once we achieve this inner happiness, inner peace, inner health, <coughs> nobody can ever take it away from us. We can have it forever. But we must work hard for it. Because anything that's happening in the outer world is always in passing. It never stays the same. It comes and goes to teach us a lesson. Think about it. A flowering seed, that seed when we sow it in soil, it turns into a plant and then this little bud comes out and then bud turns into a flower and then flower turns into a seed again. But does every flower bloom? Those seeds that are fertilized with lots of water and fertilizer here are the ones that bloom. And the ones that bloom are the ones that everybody loves. So even though the lifespan of the flower was were short, but during the time they were blooming, everybody loved them. The flower looked beautiful as it is and it gave happiness to everyone who was there. So yes we cannot control our lifespan. We know that we have no control over that moment when we will be able to inhale and then exhale and not inhale back. That last moment. We have no control. But yes we have complete control over every inhale that we take brings so much joy that every moment we live, we live it so fully. It gives us so much fuller feeling that every moment seems like years of happiness. And that's how we increase our lifespan. And that gives us so much joy. That every moment 
that was in my hands gave me so much more. So everything in this world is giving us this message but we overlook it. Look at the, the, the sun that is setting. When the sun is setting, it gives us the message that anything that rises has to set. We are not going to be here forever. But what makes the difference, what makes me different than others is while it was daytime, while the sun was shining, did I enjoy that sunlight? Or I was sitting in a room with my windows down and sunlight can't reach me. That's what makes the difference. That how we can get the most out of every moment of every day of our life. That makes us so different than others. And that comes from inner strength. And inner strength comes from science of yoga. Science of self-management. When we learn how to manage ourselves, all this time we are managing others. Isn't it? We are always looking to manage others. Because we think if I learn how to manage you and you and you and you and I have every situation under my control, I am happy. And till the end I keep fighting to win that every battle with every person. And as I am doing that, my inner strength goes down because I'm depleting my energy. So I'm left with very little. But if I only focus on myself and do those practices, have that higher wisdom that helps me to increase my inner power, with that inner focus, inner power, I control my life. I sustain that happiness. These are very simple things, but when we start to think about those these things, we can actually manifest joy in our life. We can make a difference. We can feel that we are different than others, that we are making a difference in our life and also in the life of others. When there is inner strength, then we are accepting, we are not reacting to situations. We always have that humility, humbleness, that gratitude in our heart. And when we have these inner powers, then what happens is we become divine instruments in the life of others. because. Mind you that all the talents that we have developed or we are born with are not there for our own use. When we use our strengths, when we use our expertise, when we use our knowledge for selfless purposes, for the help of others to bring joy in others' life, that's when happiness comes in our life. Pay attention to this thing. A cook, when cook cooks for just himself, does that give him happiness? No. But when cook cooks for hundreds of people and when the hundreds of people enjoy that food and then they appreciate, wow, how good this food is. That's when so much happiness comes in your heart. Oh my God. So many people enjoyed my food. I Through my food, I gave happiness to so many people. And it starts to manifest. And it stays with you for so long. Take an example of a teacher. When teacher only teaches his own children, there is not much fulfillment. But when teacher goes out and teaches in a class, hundreds of students, and those students then have beautiful careers, and they are very thankful to the teacher. All those students are blessing the teacher. Those blessings, when they start to come in your way, that's when your happiness is manifested. Look at the doctor. 
the doctor is not just taking care of his own children or taking care of the lives of his loved ones but he's taking care of all the patients and through patients he's collecting so much appreciation and gratefulness that's how he is able to maintain so much joy and happiness similarly when we connect with our inner power with the power of yog then with that unity with the inner powers develops divine love and the urge to do selfless work and when we start to not only live for ourselves but we start to use our expertise our knowledge for the goodness of others when we use our talents for the goodness of others that's when our joy starts to manifest and that's when whether we have the world or we don't have the world but our happiness is untouched why because no matter what happens we don't react to anything that comes knowing everything is in passing anything good or bad if it's coming it must and it's not going to stay with us that knowledge comes but there are so many things that we must learn one of the very important teaching that comes from yoga and yogic science and spiritual sciences that how should we handle past present and future you know many times we really don't know how should we handle there is so much that has happened in our past life it's affecting me if i have lost someone in my life or maybe someone said something very very painful that is still killing me or some incident that happened in my life is still taking my peace away and past is coming and becoming a my present moment haunting me or because something happened in the past now i am creating that expectation that in future i'm going to do this 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 so i'm building those blocks of dreams and that's taking my peaceful restful state away because i have to do this 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 tomorrow oh my god and i can't sleep today and my present is gone because either i am in past or i am in future so everybody knows power of now live in this present moment but let me tell you something very few of us are actually truly living in this present moment very few because it's an art it's a science it needs to be practiced it needs to be first heard and then lived every moment so yogic science teaches us that let go of the past why because in the past either we have created achievements so if we think of those achievements what will happen ego will come oh i did this i have that ego i'm living with that ego i'm powerful and with that ego i stop making efforts to continue to achieve higher and higher in the present moment because i'm living with that past success or something really sad happened and i'm living with the feeling of regretfulness why did i do this i should have done it and that feeling creates sadness and it's creating sadness in present moment so until unless we let go the past we cannot make the present moment very very peaceful and happy assured success and then erasing the past only comes when we do yogic practice it clears the mind it disconnects us from the dead past so only knowledge is not important but actually living that knowledge practicing that knowledge on a daily basis is what brings back the stolen laughter and smiles and then let go the past and then let go the future also 
Because when we keep in mind that oh I have to do this and then this and tomorrow this and this, 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 what happens? All of those tasks that we create for future, it can add so much stress and pain in our life. That oh my god, this is how much I have to do to be happy and I am not sure if I am capable of doing this and it takes away the happiness of this moment. So if we only live in this moment and in this moment we only focus on ourselves then asking that question, am I happy in this moment? We all need to ask this, am I happy in this moment? And if I am not happy and not fully content, then what must I do to bring that happiness back? And then make every effort to create that happiness and watch the life shifting. Watch the life starting to do miracles for you. It happens and it starts to happen instantly. We are doing all of this in the outer world but when it comes to our own life, when it comes to our own life's peace and happiness, we forget. And that's how with age, we start to attract the diseases of old age in young age. Because we are not watching every moment. You know, uh, it's, it's funny, I have a friend that I go back 30 years and she was also my neighbor and now she lives in downtown and six months ago she developed this tumor in her stomach and she didn't tell anyone till a few days ago and as she was saying all this crying non-stop that I know from last six months I have been living with so much anxiety, so much fear that there is this tumor in my stomach and my God, now when they operate on me, there is a risk of me not coming back. It is so big. So, yesterday when I went home, this feeling was in my mind that I should call her, I should call her. Something was telling me that I should call her. When I called her, I did not know she was scheduled for surgery today. And she was again crying that I have so much anxiety that tomorrow I'm going to be operated on and doctors are telling me it's going to be a very long surgery of 10 hours. And the surgery is so complicated that I'm not sure whether I'll be coming back. One little mistake and I'm gone because it's touching my pancreas. And at that time, I told her, I said, look, do you have eye time? Let's do a face time and let's start doing the breathing. So we didn't want to waste any more time. I taught her how to breathe, how to, how to bring yourself into complete relaxation so that when you go into the surgery, if you're completely relaxed, the outcome of surgery is going to be beautiful. And we did that practice yesterday and I told her before you go to bed, make sure you do it. And when you are going for surgery on the way, make sure you do it. And she did and before coming here, I called her and you know what she said? She said, it was not that bad, it only took two hours and the surgery was done. It was not as deep as doctors thought and I am feeling very good. My surgery was over in two hours. So, what I'm trying to say is, it's not the pain that comes to us, but how we react to that pain and create that hypothetical situation is what brings so much sadness in our life. So, when we are connected with the power of yoga, then we are not predicting all these sad incidents and we manifest anything that is small to such big level that creates so much poison in our life. That we are always naturally thinking positive about everything that comes to us and that is how we rise above that situation and not be affected by it. 
So last thing before we start today's stretches, because this yogic knowledge is very important. When we do yogic practice with this deeper understanding, that's when we start to benefit from it. So just like when we wash our dirty clothes every day with detergent and water, and everyone likes to wear clean clothes, exactly the same way when the inner is gone dirty with the stresses and strains and pains and diseases of life and when we wash it with the detergent of love and yoga practice and create that purity and cleanliness inside then the divine powers have a seat within us divine powers start to rule our life and every action, every thought of ours become very pure, very pious, purity of thoughts, purity of actions in our deeds, there is purity. And with that purity and positivity, we are able to sustain happiness. And once we are happy, then nothing else matters because everything what we do is only to get happiness. So why not we bring happiness first in our life and then out of that happiness when we do everything, life becomes a true paradise, a true joy, a true heaven, a true celebration for all of us. So with this yogic wisdom we'll start today's session. Let's go ahead and stand up. <coughs> 